Today we'll be doing some animation in Procreate Dreams, exporting our animations, building some sprite sheets, and using those animations to drive character animation in Bevy, as you can see right here. This is the demo we've got. We've got an animation showing as a sprite sheet and a texture atlas that is animating through the first four sets of images in this sprite sheet. If you consider this an idle pose, then you can consider this sort of like a mean pose or a charge up pose or a heel pose or something. Just another set of images for the next sort of eight frames. And then of course it's bevy so we can go left and right, we can move around and we could do more animations and whatnot. This is just kind of to show the concept, to show the workflow. Procreate Dreams then is an animation tool developed by the team behind the wildly successful drawing app Procreate that prevents a novel way to build frame by frame animation using the Apple pencil, which as somebody who studied art in college is very exciting to me. So naturally, I wanted to use it in the upcoming Bevy Game Jam on December 2nd to build sprite sheets and other animated graphics for my game. To do that, I need to develop a workflow for getting the images and animations out of Procreate Dreams and into Bevy, which as you can see, I do have successful. So inside of Dreams, we can create a new canvas with specific sizing. I'm using 256 by 256 squares, but that's probably quite big for these animations. However, the default in Procreate Dreams is 1080 by 1080 or 4K or something like that, and those are way too big. So I brought it down a little bit. Once we're inside our timeline, we can zoom in as far as possible or go to the flipbook and start drawing. There's a bunch of great tools in here like onion skins and so on, but if you're used to the feature rich nature of Procreate itself, there are a couple things that feel like they're missing. For us, the important part is that each frame is going to be used by us as a sprite index in Bevy. So in Bevy, we can control how long these frames are displayed and anything else. But the most straightforward way for us to handle it right now is if you equate a frame to being some period of time in your head. Something like 0.1 seconds per frame would be 10 FPS in the Dreams UI. And Dreams does let you set this FPS to whatever you want it to be, so your previews in app will look like they look in Bevy. After a bit of animation work, you should end up with a bunch of frames for different states of your object. I've chosen to include idle, let's say healing and moving states by slightly modifying a brush pack and doing some light animation work. I've chosen to group these up into different tracks and different sets of frames. So the first four frames are for the idle animation, the second eight frames are for healing, and then the last frames are for the moving states. I think for me, anything that I would include in the same sprite sheet will go into the same sort of dreams document. Our final move in Procreate is to export as frames. Our other option would be to use the dreams document format, but that is, as far as I can tell, undocumented and not open in any way for us to discover. So it would have to be reverse engineered. And even then, I don't know if it would stick around over time. For my use, I'm gonna export and save to iCloud using files because that will send it over to my laptop easily. Once we have the files on our computer, we need to create a sprite sheet from these files and get that into Bevy. There's a bunch of tools out there that will pack a sprite sheet and many of them have complicated algorithms for packing sprite sheets using as little space as possible. We're gonna go for the simple route using just a grid square sheet. I wanted to build an automatable process for this, so I started with a tool by Amethyst, which was a Rust game engine before Bevy existed, called Sheep. CLI tools in general tend to order files so that one and 10 are next to each other, and like two and 20, and so on. And Procreate Dreams doesn't pad its numeric frame export numbers, so I had to write a small script for renaming frame 1.png to frame 01.png to satisfy ordering for CLI tools. It's not pretty, this is a new shell script, if you've ever seen that before, but I was able to write it as a one-off in under a minute and it does work. I started out by using Sheep to pack the sprite sheet image from the resulting images, but it seemed to drop some of the sprites. Some of the animation cycles would have N minus one frames in the resulting sprite sheet and I'm not really sure why. Also, sometimes Sheep would kind of just pack them in a random order even though they were numbered and I'm also not sure why that is. Either way, this Sheep tool hasn't seen an update in a couple of years, so I actually moved to using a piece of GUI software to pack the textures for now. This feels pretty temporary to me because if I continue this path in the future doing more Dreams animation work for my Bevy games, I'll need to build a tool to do this if I have to do so, so that the process is as automatable as possible. 
I don't really want to spend my time in a GUI setting up sprites for a sprite sheet. I just want it to flow out of dreams into iCloud into my Bevy game. Once we have our sprite sheet generated, which you can see in the bottom right here, we need to get it into Bevy to use as a texture atlas. This, of course, is most easily done using Bevy Asset Loader. A lot of the code that we're looking at here, specifically around loading assets, came from the Bevy Asset Loader example, or at least one of the examples. There are quite a few. With the 2D feature for Bevy Asset Loader, that allows us to create this struct and create assets that are texture atlases. In our case, we have 256 by 256 sprite sizes. This was the sort of canvas or artboard size inside of Procreate Dreams. And I also chose to tell it how many columns and rows we have. So if you see, we have four across and five down. Then we have to give it the name of the path to the sprite sheet. In this case, it's mushroom frames color small shroomy.png, which is up here in our assets folder. And once we call that a handle to a texture atlas, Bevy Asset Loader will handle loading that in. And after we load all of our resources, transitioning into actually playing the game. We don't really have uh, too many interesting systems here. We got, we're drawing the atlas here. We're animating the sprite system and we are controlling the left and right. So left and right are like this and otherwise the sprites are just animating. We've got our camera 2D bundle, of course, and then we've got a sprite bundle that uses the entire texture as its image. That's what we see on the bottom right here. I have scaled this to be pretty small to fit in the screen, but you could make it bigger if you wanted to. This is just an example to bug out. The more interesting part is when we take our texture atlas and we turn it into a sprite sheet bundle, or at least insert a sprite sheet bundle, create the entity and whatnot. We set the texture atlas sprite to zero by default. That's our index. So that's the first image in our sprite sheet. And we use our texture atlas that we pulled in from Bevy Asset Loader. I'm also using Leafwing to handle the input mappings. You can take that or leave it. I happen to really like the crate. It's a great crate if you're dealing with input, but it's not really critical for this example either. We do have a custom struct, which is an animation timer, where we stick a timer in this component and stick it onto the entity that we are spawning in as our player that has this texture atlas on it. This timer will trigger every 0.1 seconds forever, like repeating every 0.1 seconds. And here you can see animation timer is just containing a timer. So we'll query for the entity with an animation timer, the texture atlas sprite, and our action state, which is leaf wing. And this code is not necessarily how I would suggest doing a large amount of animation, but it's just something I did to make this work. So we take that timer that runs every 0.1 seconds and we tick it. If it's finished, then I update the step for each of the animation phases. So idle, charge, and move. Those are all local U sizes. So they go from basically zero to eight or zero to seven, depending on how many frames are actually in them. The idle animation is actually a little bit interesting because while this counter goes from zero to eight every 0.1 seconds, well, not zero to eight every 0.1 seconds, but zero to eight in 0.8 seconds, I guess. <laughs> there are only four sprites to start with. So this top row is what we're using for this idle animation that's showing on the right. We're not flipping this back and forth, which we can do and do do for left and right. And then we just set our sprite index to either that step number. So the number zero through four in that case, or zero through three inclusive. Otherwise we set it to go back down. So this is a little bit of funky logic to make it go zero, one, two, three, two, one, zero, one, two, three kind of thing. So we're playing this forwards and then backwards and then forwards and then backwards. And that kind of gives us this up and down bouncy feeling for this idle animation. Similarly, each of the other actions has a starting index and then an offset. So for example, if I click back in here and I show this animation, this is an eight frame animation. It's eight total frames from Procreate Dreams, whereas the idle was four. So in this case, we play from zero to eight over and over. I think this is the more flexible way if you're looking for more artistic control, doing say all eight frames if you're doing an eight frame animation, rather than doing four and trying to go back and forth. Now, I don't know that there are enough frames in these animations to make them really nice. Uh, but my again, my goal was to test this workflow to make sure it works before I put a bunch of effort into it. So for each of these, every time our timer ticks, we're just moving these increments up. We're doing them by mod, basically the number of sprites. The charge animation starts at index four, which is the first one in the second row. It goes for eight of the sprites. The left and right animation, that's this little shroom on a skateboard, uh, goes from what, 12 to 19 or something like that. And you can see that we're actually short one sprite here at the end. We don't have 20, we have 19. So that's really it. Procreate Dreams, do your animation, do it frame by frame. Try to sync the time step inside of your FPS inside of Procreate Dreams to the time step that you expect to play it inside of Bevy and you'll get a nice, you know, preview inside of Dreams when you're working on it. Once you get those files out, 
For example, here we have frames one, two, three, four, etc. Once you get those files out, exported as frames from Dreams, you do have to turn these into a sprite sheet. That sprite sheet then looks like this. The one thing I did mention or did not mention earlier is that you can set the Procreate Dreams stage to transparent, and that's what I've done here. Actually, in one of my tests, I didn't do that when I was working with uh, a more raw form of this graphic. So you can see here that it's got frame one through whatever, and it actually has the white background inside of the sprite sheet that I created. So make sure that you make the background transparent and your sprite sheets should just come through really nicely. I actually really like this workflow. It's a little bit manual. I would like to automate it a little bit more, but it works quite nicely and I'm planning to use it for the Bevy Game Jam. So again, if you're interested in the Bevy Game Jam, this one starts December 2nd, 2023. If you're watching this later on in Bevy's life cycle, these do run, you know, every couple months. I think there's been four of them so far, or this is going to be the fourth one. And it's always a really exciting way to see what people can do with Bevy in the latest release. You get about a week to build a game, and I hope to see you there. I will also be making videos, I believe, for my own game jam entry, and I hope to see you and yours. And let me know if you're participating in the game jam. Have a great rest of your day.